The Ottoman Empire was one of the mightiest and longest lasting dynasties in world history. The Ottoman army was an advanced fighting force, being one of the first to use muskets and cannons. In Age of Empires IV, the civilization is represented from the pre-imperial period in the 11th century to the mid-16th century. They are known for their fast military production, their big armies, and their huge bombards. The Ottoman Empire's roots can be traced back to the 11th century, originating from several small nomadic Muslim emirates with Turkic origins occupying Anatolia. These groups, called Beyliks, defended the border areas with the Byzantine Empire, also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. Many warriors from Persia and Turkestan fleeing the Mongols invading the Byzantine Empire joined the Beyliks to help defend the territory. There is a group in particular that played a very important role in the Ottoman Empire formation, and this nomadic group was called Suwud. I hope I'm saying this right, by the way. I am not sure, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. And you're gonna want to remember this one. We can consider the Dark Ages in the game, representing this period of time when these groups, these nomadic groups, the Beyliks, were living in the Selchuk Empire. After Selchuk's victory over the Byzantine Empire in the Battle of Mantikert in 1071, the Beylik saw that as an opportunity to challenge the authority of the Selchuk and assert their own independence. During the next few centuries, further conflicts with the Byzantine Empire and other regions like Egypt, Syria, weakened the Selchuk even more and the Beylik saw that as an opportunity. The feudal age in the game represents around the time of the passing of the Sugut's tribe leader, the one I mentioned before. His son, Osman I, succeeded him, establishing the state that would one day become the Ottoman Empire. His ascension to power marks a transition as well from this nomadic way of life into more permanent settlements. Osmar I became emir or bey, which is the leader of a bey league, around 1281, and his clan's location, away from Mongols' invasions, near the Silk Road and near the Christian state, gave it an economic and strategic advantage. Due to all that, this clan was like a magnet to farmers and warriors fleeing the Mongols and looking for new lands. I believe that this magnet concept is the basis for the military school's mechanics in the game. These buildings can be assigned to produce one type of unit continuously at no cost, but at a slower rate. Furthermore, there were many other instances and occasions where people from all over the world joined the empire. For example, through the Death Shume system, Christian boys were taken as tribute or tax. They were converted to Islam, educated and trained to become part of the Ottoman military elite, particularly the Janissary Corps. Foreigner volunteers would also join the Ottoman military for different reasons, like employment or a sense of adventure, or simply for a chance to serve in a very powerful military force. Alliances also provided protection and economic advantages to other tribes that would in exchange join forces with the military, with the empire's military, in times of need. These are only a few examples, but with all that we can see how diverse the Ottoman military turned out to be. Having men from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds allowed them to incorporate different military tactics and strategies in battle. Now, to go to the feudal age in Age of Empires IV, you can build the Twin Minaret Medresa or the Sultan Hani Trade Network. The Twin Minaret Medresa is an economic landmark that acts as a mill. It spawns four berry bushes that are gathered 50% faster than normal berries and the bushes replenish itself upon being depleted. The Minarele Medresa is a monument of the late Selchuk period. A medresa is a college for Islamic instruction and this theological school was built in the second half of the 13th century. The name Twin Minaret Medresa comes from the Twin Minaret 
toilet or slender towers. These madrasa buildings could also be used as public kitchens, used to serve food for the poor. And that fits perfectly our landmark purpose as well. The Sultan Hani Trade Network is an economic landmark that acts as a market, but unlike the normal market, it can garrison up to six traders that can generate gold over time. This landmark is based on the Sultan Han or Sultan Hani Karavanserai, built in 1229 during the reign of the Selchuk. Karavanserai is like a road titan where traders and travelers can just rest and recover. So yeah, traders could indeed linger around in real life too. Now in Feudal Age you also get access to the Sipahi, a light melee cavalry unit that is effective against ranged units, like a um, horseman. But the Sipahi has 30 more HP than the horseman and has the ability Fortitude. Sipahi stands for soldier in Persian, but actually refers to all three born European heavy cavalry. The rise of the Ottoman Empire started with the emergence of the Ottoman Principality led by Osman I in 1299, marking what? Yeah, the transition to the Castle Age in the game. And this period in the Empire's history is known as the Proto-Imperial Era. Ha <laughs> ha, do you see that? Castle Age? Proto-Imperial, yeah. The Istanbul Imperial Palace is a military landmark that doubles the amount of Imperial Council experience earned from training units and the total number of vizier points that you can have in total is increased by two. This landmark is based on the Topkapan Palace and more specifically on its council chamber and the Tower of Justice. The council chamber is where the imperial council consisting of the grand vizier and other ministers or viziers held meetings to discuss, you know, politics. And the Tower of Justice was the imperial quarters. Constructions of this place started in 1460, but it was only completed in 1856. You heard that right. As an important government section in the palace, it makes sense that it also plays like a, a governmental role in the game as well. Now, in the Ottoman Empire, the Sultan acted as a supreme ruler in this centralized government. The Imperial Council was initially just an informal meeting, gathering, and this was only regulated in the mid-15th century. The Grand Vizier acted as the head of government, something like a prime minister nowadays, and he managed other viziers in charge of political and military affairs. In the game, as units are produced, Vizier points are rewarded to be used in the Imperial Council. Imagine that as if you were the Sultan and you are choosing your own viziers that work in different types of ministries and do different types of things and give you different types of bonuses as well. So we can understand this mechanic like assigning ministers to our government, in this case viziers, and you are the Sultan. And different types of ministers and different types of viziers acting in different fields give you different bonuses and advantages. Okay, let's go to the next one. The Mehmet Imperial Armory. This landmark is a military landmark that produces each unit for free at a slower pace, just like the military schools. This landmark is based on the Top Hane Yamira, which was the Imperial Ottoman Armory built in the mid 1400s under Mehmed the Conqueror. It was used to manufacture cannonballs and cannons, but nowadays it's used as an art museum. Now, in the Castle Wage, you get access to another new unique unit. The Janissaries. In the game, the Janissaries are similar to hand cannoneers that can counter cavalry units instead of siege. The Janissaries were elite infantry units created by Sultan Murad I that formed the Sultan's household troops and bodyguards. Recruited through that process that I mentioned before, the Dev Shima, they became well known by 1383. The Janissaries wore uniforms, were paid in cash instead of war spoils, and they marched to a distinct music. From the Mehter. These men, these Janissaries, were taught to see the corpse as their family and home, and the Sultan as their father. 
de facto. And talking about method, Ottoman military bands are thought to be the oldest variety of military marching band in the world. Mehter is a person-derived word to refer to a single musician in the band, which played a martial tune during military campaigns. In the game, you can also choose what type of music and style you want your Mehter to play that is gonna give you different types of bonus. What is interesting though, is that composers like Mozart and Beethoven were inspired to create compositions that imitate the music of the Mechter. Did you know that? I had no idea. That's so fascinating. Isn't it fascinating? I think that's fascinating. The Imperial Age in the game represents the transition to the Ottoman Empire Classical Age after the conquest of Constantinople in 1453 that lasts until 1566. During this time, in the 15th and 16th centuries, the Ottoman Empire entered a period of expansion and conquest, extending its borders deep into Europe and North Africa. And to go to the Imperial Age, you can build the Seagate Castle or the Istanbul Observatory. The Istanbul Observatory is a technology landmark that acts as a university and increases the influence effect provided by universities and blacksmiths in reducing the training time of military schools and the Mehmet Imperial Armory to 60%. This landmark's real-life counterpart is the Constantinople Observatory of Taki Adidin, built in Constantinople and today Istanbul by the Empire's chief astronomer, Tak Adidin Muhammad, in 1577. And this beautiful astronomical observatory was one of the largest in the medieval world. However, there's always a however, it only existed for a few years. It was destroyed in 1580. Within months after the completion of the observatory, a comet with a huge tail appears in the sky. And the Sultan at the time, Murad III, demands from his chief astronomer an analysis of this. What's the meaning of this comet? Is there a prophecy? He demands to know what that means. Working day and night without food or rest, Taki, the astronomer, studied the comet and came up with a meaning for that, with an understanding of what that could be. And he predicted that it was an indication of well-being and meant the conquest of Persia. But, and there is always a but, unfortunately, instead of well-being, uh, bad things happened. A devastating plague followed in several parts of the empire and very important people died. In order to prevent further use of this observatory for astrological purposes, the observatory was destroyed. This happened, by the way, just as the King of Denmark was completing the construction of an observatory for Tycho Brahe that would pave the way for Kepler's elucidation of the orbits of planets. The observatory had many astronomical instruments, and many of those were built by Taki himself. And the most remarkable one was the observational clock which was used to measure the right ascension of the stars. This is considered to be one of the most important innovations in the 16th century astronomy. And that is because at that time, clocks were not accurate enough to be used for astronomical purposes. And things like, for example, prayer times were calculated using instruments like this. The Seagate Castle is a defensive landmark that acts as a keep and grants an aura to itself and other keeps that increases nearby traders and trade ship movement speed by 30% and their armor by 8. This landmark is based on the Kilit Bahia Castle located in Dardanelles. This tree-leaf-shaped castle was a formidable stronghold and nowadays is used as a museum. And finally, we are gonna talk about it. In the Imperial Age, you get access to another unique unit. Can you think about something? Something big? Yes, you get access to the Great Bombard. Boom! <laughs> this large cannon is excellent against buildings, but Due to its splash damage, it can also shatter any kind of foot soldiers. This bombard is based on the Great Turkish Bombard, a 15th century supersized bombard that weighed up to 16,000 kilograms. This super cannon was as imposing as the Darth Vader Death Star. 
Janissaries, for example, would stand high ground protected by these bombards, allowing them to shoot without disturbances. This bombard was designed based on the Basilica, a big bombard designed by a Catholic engineer from Hungary. And these Basilica bombards were used during the siege of Constantinople, for example. Around 80 basilicas, each pulled by 60 oxen and 400 men, were utilized to breach the over 20 kilometers long triple walls of the city, forming the largest artillery army the world has ever seen. The Ottomans also have a unique military ship that acts as a transport ship and a military school, and as such can produce infantry and cavalry units for free. The Ottoman navy was involved in many conflicts, playing a decisive role in the conquest of Constantinople and their expansion into the Mediterranean and Black Seas. By the 18th century, the Ottoman navy was the third largest in the world, behind only of the British and the French. Now let's see the final piece, the cherry on the cake, the wonder. The wonder in the game is called Azur Mosque and is based on the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, also known as the Blue Mosque. Constructed between 1609 and 1616 in Istanbul, it was included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site list in 1985. After the crushing loss in the war with Persia in the early 17th century, Sultan Ahmed decided to build a large mosque in Istanbul to reassert the Ottoman power. Hand-painted blue tiles adorned the interior of the mosque, 20,000 hand-painted glazed ceramics to be more specific, in 60 different tulip patterns, decorate the whole upper area. And in the lower stories, more than 200 stained glass windows illuminate the place. This astounding place of worship receives 4 to 5 million visitors every year. And that's all I have for you guys on the Ottoman civilization. I hope you liked it, please give this video, you know, thumbs up. It's for free and please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this and of course to support me it really helps so thank you very much for watching and i see you guys in the next one bye